almost 20 years old and still as beautiful as ever. This is the Apple Cinema Display 23 inch. In this video, I'm gonna show you why this thing is still so awesome even today. And I'm gonna show you how you can hook it up to all your modern computers. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this 23 inch Apple Cinema Display. When this thing was introduced back in 2004, it was absolutely revolutionary. If you want an awesome scroll down memory lane, go ahead and check out the Apple uh, WWDC announcement where Steve Jobs talks about this thing. I'll link that up here. It is something that you really wanna watch if you love uh, Apple history and if you wanna learn more about this display. But this thing, when it came out, it was $2,000. Can you believe that? $2,000 for a 23 inch monitor. And if you watch that video, you'll see how excited the crowd was to that this thing existed, that you could go out and spend $2,000 and have a monitor like this. So this was, like I said, revolutionary. It, for Apple professionals, for professional uh, TV, movie makers, that kind of stuff, uh, photo editors, then this thing was what everybody wanted. And it got even better than this. They made a bigger one. They made a 30 inch that same year. Just absolutely crazy, like $3,500 or something. Just a, an amazing monitor. But we're gonna take a look at this thing right here. We're gonna hook it up to a couple different computers. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can hook it up to just about any kind of computer that you've got and uh, and see how, how wonderful it still is. Now, some of what made it so special was the specs on this thing. 1900 by 1200 uh, pixels. Now we all know 1900 by 1080 today as 1080p and we understand that's you can go down to Walmart and spend 80 bucks and get a, a 1080p monitor. But what made this one special, not only the 1980, the 1200 that gives you more uh, height to work with, which is important when you're dealing with content where you're editing content, it's definitely a benefit to you. And not only that, but the, but the color accuracy the uh, viewing angles, it was just wonderful. So let's take a look at some of the connections that it has on it and how it would have connected back in the day. So what made another thing that made this thing so special is this guy right here. So this is a DVI connector, which this was the first year that they went to a DVI connector instead of an Apple proprietary. So they had the ADC connector on the studio displays just previous to this. So if you've ever seen the old plastic style looking things, um, very, very uh, 90s looking uh, monitors, all acrylic plastic, um, those used ADC. Still a great panel, but you could only hook it up to like Mac Pros and you know whatever the big desktop was back then. So this is DVI. You could hook this up to you know, basically anything that had DVI in it back in the day. So even Windows PCs, and they even said that in the keynote, I think, that you could even hook this up to a Windows PC. So you got the DVI connector. Also on here, you've got a USB connector, because in the back of here is two USB ports. So you could plug this into your computer or laptop, whatever you're plugging it into. And then you'd have like a hub back here, basically. Same thing with this. This is your FireWire connection. So if you plug this into the side of your fire into the side of your laptop or computer, then you'd have two firewire ports in the back of there that you can connect to. And then last but not least, you've got the power connector. So this thing needed a power brick, which looks like this. And for this size, it was a 90 watt power adapter. So you plug this into the wall, and then you plug that little funny connector into here. And this is also kind of uh, revolutionary for its time. It plugged in either way. You couldn't get it wrong. So just like their lightning connectors that they came out with, and just like modern USB-C, just a very easy connection. So those are the connections that you got. Like I said, you got two USBs and two firewires in the back of there that you connect peripherals to. So enough talking about it. Let's go ahead and get a computer. We're going to plug it in and uh, get a picture up on the screen. All right, first one we're going to connect to is this 15-inch... MacBook Pro, and this is a 2010 15-inch MacBook Pro. So on the side here, we can see we've got basically everything we need. We've got a DisplayPort, mini DisplayPort connector here, USB and FireWire. I'm just going to be worried about the, the video connection, so I'm not going to worry about the others. But we're going to plug right into this 
mini display port. Now obviously there's no DVI port on this computer so you need something like this. So this is a mini display port and that's what that icon there is and then you've got DVI on this side. So we're just going to plug that in here and then plug this into the side of the laptop and let's go ahead and turn this thing on. All right, now like I said, this is a 2010 MacBook Pro and it's running Mac OS Monterey. If you don't know how to do that, I can put a video up here on how you can do that, run this newer operating system on this old, old, old laptop. So this is exactly the type of MacBook Pro that someone might have back in the day that wanted to hook up to one of these. So using the little adapter here, you can see I plugged it in, it turned it on right away. So if we go ahead and go down into the settings here and look at displays, you can see it recognizes the built-in display here and then the much larger uh, cinema display and it sees it as a cinema HD display. So we can even go into the device settings and adjust each one of these to see if we want it to be the main display, an extended display, or if we want a mirror. So you can actually mirror your laptop to this. Now I would never mirror this display here to the cinema display because this laptop has basically a native resolution of 1440 by 900. So we've just turned this beautiful monitor into a, a blown up monitor here. So we're not going to do that. We can either keep it extended like this and then you can use both both screens you got something over here you got something over here or you could switch and make the cinema display the main display now let's go ahead and do that but first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up this web browser here and here's Apple's website and I've got this thing blown up to the full screen so I've got a full screen display here and now I'm going to go back into these settings and I'm going to switch the cinema display to be the main display. And now what we're looking at over here is basically the size of this web browser is what this screen was here. So you can see all the extra real estate that we're getting, all these extra pixels and that is just amazing. That's, that's a game changer if you're going to be working on any kind of uh, video, photo, editing, something, something like that. So don't ever mirror the display. Either make this the main display or you can close the lid down on your laptop and I think it'll default to the, the main display. So this is looking good. We've got a 2010 laptop using a 2006 uh, monitor basically. It, it, I think they made these from 2004 to 2006. So we're, we're doing good with some old tech and you can see it's running pretty nice. So let's go ahead and, and go a little bit more modern with our computer. All right, next up we got a late 2012 13-inch MacBook Pro here. And this is a little bit newer. So this one uh, would be the same as anything from the late 2012 up to like the 2015 age where we have Thunderbolt ports on them and we also have HDMI ports. So right now I'm plugged into the Thunderbolt port. I took that same exact adapter, which is a DisplayPort adapter, and it's plugged it into the Thunderbolt because this will actually carry video over Thunderbolt. So it was just plug and play. Plugged it in, boom, it's there. So I'm going to do that same demonstration again where I made this the main display. And because this is a little bit older operating system, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shut the uh, lid down and make that force this to the main display. So let's bring up this Apple website again. Got this thing blown up full size. Now to get this done, you do have to have a power connector plugged in because if you don't have a power connector plugged into your laptop when you close the lid down, it just thinks that you want to shut the, the computer down. So I'm going to close the lid down. I do have a mouse plugged in so I can still manipulate things. And here we go. Here's the MacBook Pro screen. So this is even a, a bigger difference between how much extra screen we get just from this, you know, 1900 by 1200 display. Now I know what you guys are thinking, maybe uh, 4K displays, so much better. Well, 4K, not necessarily, because 4K is basically four 1080p screens 
but then they double the size of all the pixels so it ends up being basically a 1080 screen. Now you can blow it up to be actually 4K of resolution, but then everything on the screen is so tiny unless you've got a ginormous screen. Now as far as like a 1440p screen that we have today, yeah, those are, you know, very common and you do get a lot more pixel real estate, but back in 2004 that that wasn't even heard of. So this 1200 um, height was pretty amazing. So that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use an adapter like this to hook it up to the HDMI port and see if it works the same exact way. All right, so now I've taken the DVI connector that's built into here, this cable, plugged it into that adapter I just showed you, that DVI to HDMI. Now DVI and HDMI are extremely compatible together, so it's no brainer that this is just going to work. So I plugged it into the right side of the laptop that has the HDMI port right here and again plug and play it just came right up so we didn't lose anything at all um, so you get your choice on these models this would be like the late 2012 to 2015 range of either using Thunderbolt ports or HDMI and for that matter basically any Windows laptop that has HDMI or your desktop so next up let's go ahead and grab a, a newer laptop that's got the USB-C connectors on it and see how it works all right, next up, we've got a 2020 MacBook Air, and this is an M1 version. I tried the same exact thing with the 2020 MacBook Air, which was the previous, the Intel version, and it worked just as good. So this, as you know, has nothing but USB-C ports on it. So this is not as common a connector, probably not something that you've got laying around unless you actually needed one, but this is USB-C on one side and a female DVI on the other side. So that's very important. There's ways to adapt, like I said, HDMI to USB-C very easily, and then HDMI to DVI. But if you're going to do this, just do it the right way and just grab this thing. That way you don't have too many connectors in the, in the middle. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to take our DVI connector coming off of the display, plug it into this adapter, take that adapter and plug it right into one of our open USB-C ports. And there we go, we got the display up. So just like I did before, I've got the Apple screen up here. We're gonna go into our settings. And from our settings, we can see that this is our external display. Now it's calling it Play. I'm guessing that's the name of this adapter. You know, whoever makes this adapter, that's what they name that adapter. So it's seeing the adapter, it's not seeing the screen, but it's seeing the correct resolution. And we're just going to go ahead and make this the main display. And what really uh, knocked my socks off is how quick these switch. If I go back and switch that again, make it external display. There is like no resync or anything. It's just boom, it's, it's there. So if we should show this again as the main display, you can see... Very similar to the others that the uh, the monitors got a lot more real estate than your laptop does. So this would make a perfect screen for maybe an M1 or M2 Mac Mini. It's not the newest or biggest screen in the world, but it's perfectly good for the majority of what you would need to use on one of your newer Mac Minis. Now unlike some of the newer displays that came out after this, like the Thunderbolt display, um, it does not have a power lead coming off of the big cable here to go to your laptop. That's something that they thought of later. So that would be nice, but that's not a deal breaker. It's nice to have, but it's not a deal breaker. But this is, for all intents and purposes, a wonderful display for what you might be able to find this for. I picked this up locally here used for $50, and it's <laughs> used to be a $2,000 monitor. So I know it's almost 20 years old, but I'm going to still consider that a bargain. I'm pretty sure that some people will be able to find this for a lot cheaper than $50. And some places you may find it for not as cheap. But for $50, I was willing to do it. This one was in great shape. It had a bunch of connectors on it. It did come with the DVI to mini display port. So it came with that already. And it came with this concoction here. Which 
when I saw it in the picture, I wasn't exactly sure what was going on there. But this is a Firewire 400 to 800. So this would plug into one of the newer laptops. And then this is a Thunderbolt to Firewire 800. So this is probably a, a $30 adapter by itself. And uh, that's going to go in my toolkit. So I'm glad to get that. This is, a, again, another probably $10, $15 adapter. So I almost got my money's worth in adapters and get the display for free just about. But all these other adapters I showed you, I'll have links down in the description below uh, in case you need to pick one of these up. Now before I say goodbye, I want to tell you one more thing about this and that is for this 23 inch Senator display, you saw how easy it was to get hooked up. Basically plug it into the wall, grab the right adapter, plug it into your laptop, you're done. Now if you happen to find one of the 30 inch ones, which are really nice displays be careful with how what you're going to plug that into the 30 inch display needed a dual link dvi and there was a bunch of there's much bigger box than this one and some other adapters that you needed to use to get that to hook up to whatever type of computer that you're going to use when it came out the only thing it would hook up to is a power mac computer so there are ways to adapt those to more modern computers but it does require some adapters and they're not like $10 adapters. They're more like probably $50, $60, $70. And in, in the heyday, they were a couple hundred dollars for the adapter. So don't just go out and grab a 30-inch and think that you can plug it into the wall, plug it into your laptop and be done. Do a little bit of research on that. But that is going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Go out and find one of these if you're in the market for a nice vintage uh, aluminum-looking very 2000s Apple looking display. Um, I'm going to have this one hooked up to a Mac Mini myself. Let me know down in the, in the comments below what you find if you have one of these. If you find one, what you're going to hook it up to, what you're going to do with it. And I'd love to find out what you guys are using them for. If you found this video at all helpful, I appreciate that thumbs up. It helps out the channel. And if you want to see more stuff like this, smash that subscribe button too. And stay tuned for more content. But thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.